Buenos dias! Let me put my glasses on. I look funny without glasses. Right? It also helps uh, the Casey Neistat said. Why, uh, people ask him why he always wears glasses. So you can't tell if he's looking at the camera or not. So I can... You guys might think I'm looking at the camera right now, but I'm looking at the road. See how that works? So it doesn't look rude like I'm ignoring you. Um, Monday morning. Uh, we've got a load picking up. Doggy treats. At the place in Adel, I said I, I didn't want to pick up anymore because they took so long to load. But we're going to give them one more chance. We'll see how this, uh, we'll see how this goes. So this is picking up in uh, Georgia and we're going to, is it, how do you say it, Cochranton? I think so. Cochranton, Pennsylvania, which is like north of Pittsburgh, east of, um, is that Cincinnati at the top right? Cincinnati or Cleveland one of those kind of over uh, over northeast of like Akron Ohio which uh, if we can get by uh, mighty products I'm gonna swing through there and, and pick up some things that I want to get I want to still get uh, some parachute tarps but it seems like they're always uh, always sold out I don't know if they uh, somebody mentioned that they might come from uh, they might come from China and they might, you know, be backed up because the whole uh, shipping container issue that we're having. Uh, we passed on a load that was uh, picking up in Savannah and going to somewhere in Ohio. But it was picking up at a port. Um, I don't have my Twit card. Um, I don't know. I just don't. I just haven't had time, honestly. Um, yeah, I'll get behind this in my seat. Um, because of COVID, it, it, it's kind of a pain in the butt to go to go get your Twit card right now, and we don't have anywhere around Valdosta that you can get your Twit card. So it's like it's a, it's a whole day thing. It, it'll be like a whole day process. I'd have to drive. I think the closest I found was um, maybe Bainbridge, Georgia, to get it, and uh, it, it would basically be an all-day thing just to get a Twig part. The Twig loads don't don't pay you anymore. Um, it is nice to maybe get into a spot or out of a spot that you're trying to get in and out of. I just, I don't think it, I just don't think it's really worth it. I mean, I think it's crazy to me that I can have my concealed carry permit, and that's not good enough. They want you to have another card. It's like, trust me, I guarantee you my concealed carry permit went through more rigorous background checks than what your toy card went through. Or maybe not, maybe, they, maybe they're the same or maybe it's worse. So anyways, I'm gonna pick up a load of uh, PVC pipe and take it to Pennsylvania. Um, let's see, we got home Saturday from dropping in uh, Frostproof, Florida at like what time, like one or two o'clock-ish? And uh, end up doing some things to the truck. I, I wash the truck. Um, there's some things in life that uh, is worth paying other people to do. And washing a semi truck is one of them because it's, it's a nightmare. And I didn't do as good as a job as what they would have done. And it was like an all day process of like dragging out the, the pressure washer and, and dealing with all of that. And their cleaners are a lot stronger than my cleaners. Um, getting the grease off the door like I tried washing the truck with Dawn and scrubbing it with a scrub brush I, I couldn't get the grease off the door so I went and got some of that um, that cleaner degreaser that they sent me and that melted it away but uh, I'm running low on it so if you want to send me more that would be fantastic better say their name or they won't know you need more say their name Say their name, say their name. Come on, what's their name? Super clean. Super clean. Super clean. Yeah, so we're running low on that because my kids got a hold of it and they decided to clean their crap with it. And it's like, that wasn't your guys' stuff to um, use. So, uh, I forgot what gear I was in. But yeah, that, that completely melted off the door. So, 
I think my bot my squirt bottle is a little messed up too. Because it's one of those deals where you gotta keep either the bottle has a hole in it or the tube has a hole in it. It was like sucking up most of the air. Anyways, I babbled for so long. Five to six minutes. Uh we'll see you guys when we get there. And we're back. Uh I got sidetracked. Uh anyways, I was washing the truck. And I ordered one of those uh, those eraser wheels that you use to take stickers and stuff off of a truck. I've always seen videos of it. I've seen body shops use them and stuff. I've never personally used one. So I was a little like leery of using them on my good vehicles. Let me tell you though, those things are awesome. I got mine off of Amazon for like 10 bucks. So we had some keep trucking stickers uh, that I, I peeled off the passenger side one and it left all that goo. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to have to deal with it. So I used the eraser wheel. It didn't work as good on the goo. It works better if you just take the whole sticker off at once. So I got the goo off. I got that off. And I don't know if you guys have noticed in the videos, but the uh, driver's side lower part of the window had like a really old LSU sticker. I know they're like a baseball team or a basketball team or something. And, uh, people give me hell for it. I don't care. I don't watch the sports. But uh, we got the sticker off the window. Just went around and kind of cleaned up some of the old stuff off the truck. I mean, you can't polish a turd, but uh, you can make it less shitty. You know what I mean? So, anyways, I want to tell you guys that before I, before I forgot about it. Uh, I would be okay using this eraser wheel on it. And I just washed this windshield and a bug just splattered my windshield. It's like, you son of a gun. And now his guts are all over the windshield. I meant to put some rain axe on the windows. <clears throat> Remember when I asked you when you went to town, are you going anywhere else? And you're like, no, I'm just going to go. And I texted you, do you need anything from Walmart? Okay, well, I was busy. I wanted some rain axe. Anyways, yeah, we'll see you guys in a bit. Well, there she is. We, uh, they wanted us to smoke tarp this one for whatever reason. Maybe because the pipe is white? Man, we, we gotta pull this around this corner better. Hold on. All right, got that wrapped around that corner a little better. Uh, yeah, so this is just on those basic pipe loads. I think it's 32,000 pounds. Um, so they want you to belly wrap here. So basically what they do is they'll stick these first two stacks on here. Then they want you to get out and throw some straps over it. Can't really tell it on this because I got a tarp here, but you can see we did the two inch right here. Anyways, he said belly wrap it, flag me down, and I'll set the other two or the other sections up. <clears throat> and I was standing here as he was sticking these two on right here. And he's like, go ahead and belly wrap. I was like, well, I can't. I said, my straps are in my toolbox right there. He's like, oh, oh okay. And then he's like, yeah, flag me down. I was like, okay. So I open up my toolbox and I start walking around with my straps. And he runs right into my toolbox. 
busts all the rivets off the toolbox, bent the toolbox up here. Like, <sighs> I, I, I can't win. Now I have to find some, some rivets or some self tappers. Today's Monday, my house is 30 minutes that way in the wrong direction. So it's like, do I go home and fix the toolbox or do I just try to fix it on the road? Aggravating. Anyways, pretty basic load. Uh, we're done strapping up, so we're gonna get out of here. Look at the window on this thing. How do people not see in on that thing? It must be either like super tinted or like a curtain. Yeah, you perverts would be trying to look at my wiener in that thing, wouldn't you? Yeah. Wouldn't they, baby? What are you doing over there? Editing. Editing what? Video. One of my videos? What? One of my videos? No. When was the last time you edited one of my videos? I don't know. It's been months. Yeah. You're fired. They don't like my when I edit anyways. Thoughtbots, you need to start editing. No, you stay there. You don't have to get down. You have to get down, Thoughtbots. Good morning. So, let me show you guys where we ended up last night. Oh my God, I almost fell. <laughs> oh, we're on the side of the road. Right there's a toll booth. Um, we tried to stop at uh, uh, Tamarack Travel Center in, uh, is it West Virginia or Virginia? I, I can't remember, one of the two. And that place was a complete nightmare. Um, tires are still doing good. Uh, yeah, it was completely packed. I mean, there was trucks parked in the car section. There was trucks parked all along the road. Like, I couldn't park there even if I wanted to park like a butthole. So... We ended up getting to this spot right here, which is only a couple of miles from that Tamarack. Um, with like six minutes left on the clock. And I seen this little pullover section here. It looked like a few people had pulled over before. And I'm like, screw it. That, that's, that's where we have to shut down because I don't think there's anything else coming up. Um, it's not according to uh, Trucker Path. So, we shut it down here at uh, like 11.15 last night. So we can't move until uh, until 9.15. We've got about five hours of driving left. 
it's gonna put us there at like two o'clock but I want to stop and get fuel before we um, before we get into Pennsylvania because Pennsylvania's fuel is super expensive I mean fuel everywhere is super expensive the cheapest I'm gonna be able to find along the way is um, I think I got a place punched in two hours from here. It's gonna be like almost 360 a gallon. Does she need to go out? Do you have to go out, fat butts? Oh, we need to put your collar on ya. Oh, come on, baby girl. Come on. Oh yeah, that's my baby. Oh. All right, stay right here. Oh, I got my South Georgia hot shot. Look at those mountain hoodies on. Uh, whew. It got chilly last night. I don't know what the temperature was, but we didn't run the AC or anything. Um, and I froze my butt off. I ended up having to cover up in two covers. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this. Fat butts, where are you going? You stay, you stay close to daddy. I don't think I did, but here it goes. So, as I was uh, running the AC like I do when we were trying to, when we were packing the truck, Bad Bats, come over here, babies. It's okay. What's wrong with you? Um, it gave us an error code. So we tried to look up the error code and, uh, couldn't figure anything out it wouldn't blow cold uh, my uh, my youngest son Nate uh, his 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 best friend's dad works for an AC company so I had him come over and look at it and uh, there's some copper tubings coming off the compressor and one of those copper tubings broke so I mean lucky for us uh, we were contacted that there was a recall on this unit anyways so this unit was gonna get swapped anyways but I wanted to know what went wrong with it uh, there's some about electrical shortage uh, that could cause a fire with this model or something and uh, I don't know whatever so he suggested what I should do because we got up there and we took the covers off. And there's these little rubber feet underneath the compressor. The problem is the rubber feet's like super, super soft. Like, like, like super soft. So the compressor is able to bounce around a lot. And that's, that's what ended up killing that compressor or that line on that compressor is that thing bouncing around so much he said because he works on a lot of these mini splits he's never seen a compressor uh, that was able to move around so much so what we're gonna do with the new one is because uh, I was thinking man how can I like strap that little compressor down in there keep it from bouncing around too much and uh, he suggested to uh, fat butts hey you stay over here uh, take some, some touch foam and spray in there. Kind of lock, lock that stuff in place so that it can't move. I know everybody's like, ah, oh, here we go. We told you, Robert, it wasn't going to work. Uh, uh, I, 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 I don't care. If you guys haven't realized by now, I don't care what you say. Then I don't know what to tell you. You need, you need, you need help. So, anyways, that's the deal with that. Um, yeah sucks but hey we'll get it figured out obviously mounting that thing to the back of the cab would be nice but uh because then it would be on air ride but i don't think that's gonna work either because there just isn't enough room up there and uh this is just fiberglass i don't know i mean these are just nut certs well that's metal right there but i think that up there is fiberglass 
So it's not like I can just stick a, a nut cert into fiberglass that can hold a 50 pound air conditioner. So it's gonna have to stay up there. And if that doesn't work, then we'll try something else. I guess people don't realize me doing this stuff gives me confidence. So it is whatever. Load's doing good. Uh, tarp job kind of sucks. Honestly, um, trying to pull that thing over it was getting stuck on these wooden things. And uh, I don't know. It's it's whatever. They wanted a uh, they wanted a tarp on the side of my exhaust, so I gave them a tarp on the side of my exhaust. It's not the prettiest thing. Who cares though, right? Anyways, it is. Um, oh, I stopped by Loves yesterday too to try to put air in my tires. And I push the uh, nipple in the um, 841, so we can we can start in about 30 minutes uh, to make sure that the uh, air truck was working. And air was coming out, but uh, it was taking tire air out of my tires because these little tire pressure deals turn yellow. Like black means that you need air, and then yellow. There'll be yellow with a line, and you're supposed to line the lines up, and that's a perfect 110 PSI. And then after yellow, it goes to red, lets you know that there's too much air pressure. Anyways, on the other side, it started out yellow and wasn't quite to the line. So I was just taking the air truck, and I was trying to go around and, and top everything off, and it ended up sucking air out of the tire. So what a nightmare. Anyways, we had to throw a strap on this toolbox because that forklift driver ran into our toolbox and uh, busted that off. So when we run by a Home Depot or Lowe's, it won't be until, so on the Raycon, it says that this has to drop by two o'clock. This was actually set to drop tomorrow. And I'm like, man, I can get there today. So I'm hoping we can get there and they'll unload me because it's looking like after I stop and get fuel, it'll probably be like 2.30 when we get there. And uh, Mason's looking for a load. Uh, pick, hopefully we can find one that picks up today after we drop this and we can continue driving. So anyways, I babbled too much. And uh, Fat Butts is shaking. Are you cold, baby? Is it cold out here? It's a little chilly. It feels good though. I love hoodie weather. Hoodie weather. Especially when it's a South Georgia hot shot hoodie. No. Uh, so I don't know if you guys, if everybody's seen the episodes, basically all the proceeds from all my shirts and all my hoodies, all my, all my uh, sales, all the profits, which I think it's up to like $70 right now. Um, yeah, I've talked about, I, I don't like, T, uh, I think this company's called Teespring. Um, I don't like Teespring. I think the quality's kind of crap. Um, the price is expensive. Uh, I just let them set the price with what they normally set it to. Um, I found that if you dry any of their shirts on like high heat, it completely destroys the picture. So I still have to find somebody that, that can make my t-shirts. I've been lazy. Anyways, all the, uh, every single penny of the proceeds will go to, um, I, I donate it. So haven't donated anything yet. I figured I'd do it like every couple hundred dollars. Um, but I think we're up to like 70 bucks. I think I make like $5 a t-shirt, if that. So I would like to donate it to uh, animal shelters and rescue places and stuff like that. That's what I would like to do, especially for like bully breeds and stuff, since, since I love pits so much. Um, I'm actually trying to get another pit. There's a, uh, I got a buddy that lives behind somebody that's been mistreating the, his dogs and uh the, the pound came from him. so we we went up to the pound and the pound's like well so here's the deal he lives in a, a place called uh Lowndes, Lowndes county Lowndes county does not allow you to chain up your dogs but he had one chain coming off of a tree in this backyard and then he had two dogs chained to each other so wherever one dog went, the other dog had to go. And uh, I think they came and picked the dogs up because he was uh, technically breaking the law. Now, I think he has a fine to pay. And um, and then they'll let him get the dogs back, but I think they're gonna keep an eye on him. 
I don't think he has the money to pay the fine. Um, he's got a male that looks exactly like Fat Butts. And then he's got a little female. Um, he's had her ears clipped and, and stuff like that. It's a, a supposedly, he was planning on breeding these dogs. Everybody and their brother breeds pit bulls. You can't make money on, on breeding pit bulls. It's, it's not a, you won't make any money. After technically you should get their shots done and you feed the dogs and you deal with all that up to the point. I mean, you, you can get a pit bull for like 50 bucks. And honestly, people only sell those when their dogs accidentally get knocked up. So for him to like go out and get dogs and be like, I'm gonna start breeding dogs, just kind of makes me sick of myself because it's not gonna work. People aren't willing to pay a lot of money for a pit bull. So, uh, good thing about them going to the pound, I think the pound will neuter them and bring them up on their shots and then there'll be like a rehoming fee that we'll pay. Um, I only really cared about getting the dog that looked like that butts. But the uh, pound is like, look, we don't like to separate dogs when they come in together. And I can understand that. I mean, they've been basically chained together. I mean, the other one's a puppy. It's probably six or seven months old at that. So, if I have to, I'll get both dogs. Fat butts. You want to go in the truck or are you cold? Oh, let me, let me let you go. She's she's ready to get in the truck. She's cold. Look at her. Are you cold, baby girls? <laughs> All right. All right. We'll see you guys later. Well, we have arrived in Pennsylvania. And, uh... Hopefully they unload us. Uh, according to the Raycon, they stop unloading it too, but there's still a bunch of people here working. So leader went to run up to the office. Of course, there's no. What are you doing? Hi. What are you doing? There's no. Um, there's no number on the Raycon or the BOL. And um, <clears throat> you all right? When we contacted the broker. You know, we're like, yeah, there's no number on the rate count or the BOL. Are we able to drop this tomorrow, which is today, if we get there in time? And they were like, yeah. So they didn't give us the number. Maybe it's something they just don't want to give up. Maybe they're afraid you'll steal some uh, customers from them. I keep hearing a noise. I don't know what it is. Anyways, we got a load picking up uh, over by Akron, Ohio, going down to somewhere in South Carolina. It's supposed to be some uh, transformer heads or something. I hope it's those big things. I always see truck drivers pulling them. It's those big things like you would see. Um, it's got like the coils that go around them. Just really cool looking like uh, mad scientist kind of stuff like you'd see in a movie, you know? So. Are you okay? Mom will be right back. Yeah, there's still a bunch of cars here, so hopefully they're still working. And hopefully they'll unload us. So just wait on Lady to get here, and uh, we'll see you guys in a bit. we're unloaded I mean they unloaded us so fast I pulled up and there's two forklifts waiting on us like we couldn't get the straps off fast enough they must have told these guys they get to go home if they unload this truck really fast because they were on top of it so did you send me the right con for the next one I'm about to, I'm not oh, okay now we head over to I believe the next one picks up around Akron I was hoping to go buy Mighty Products, but I don't think they're gonna be open by the time we get over there. I'll have to see. I think it, I think we're an hour away, I think Mason said. Right now it's 3.30, so that would be like 4.30. I think they close at five. I don't think they're gonna want me in there. I'm really hoping they have some uh, parachute tarps 
um, and I want to get some four inch uh, hand ratchets because those steak pocket things I bought are, <coughs> are nice but sometimes you want the strap in the middle between those two so those hand ratchets would be nice so anyways we're gonna get this address punched in and uh, we'll see you guys later <laughs>